G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and here we are out in the orchard on a beautiful winter's day here in sunny southeast subtropical Queensland. And I've just planted out this pomelo, it's a citrus tree adding to my citrus collection. I've been wanting to get one of these for ages. Pomelos are the largest citrus tree and the largest fruit that you can get. Uh, it's sort of a bit like a grapefruit but apparently they can get as big as your head and uh, very nice tasting and I've just planted it out and when I was planting it out I thought you know what I really just should show you guys what I typically do we've got around 120 plus fruit trees that I've planted out all the same way or mostly the same way uh, because of our clay soil underneath this thin layer of topsoil that we've got some trees like avocados I need to mound up otherwise they will get root rot and uh, their taproot just doesn't tolerate the clay and uh, they stay wet and no good but citrus trees are one of my strong suits here on our property they will grow beautifully their taproot doesn't seem to be affected too much by the clay but they have a extensive feeder root system citrus trees do so if you mulch them well and just you let them spread out and you don't uh, chip around the base of the tree too much or anything they will grow beautiful and healthy in this type of climate uh, and uh, clay soil doesn't really worry them too much so I've just planted this one and uh, I have another fruit tree to plant out and I thought well I'll just take you through it and go through a demonstration of how I do it it seems like a pretty simple process and it is but lots of people have different ways and methods of doing it add this fertilizer add that do this and do that um, I have a really simple process best way to explain it is to do it I've got a star fruit tree a crambola or something like that carabola I think is the is the name I'm not too sure I've always just called it a star fruit a nice fr fleshy type fruit good tropical fruit that uh, I've been meaning to grow here and I've got a nice healthy looking specimen from the nursery so without any further ado let's get into it and I'll show you how I go about simply putting that tree in the ground Yeah, happy with that positioning. So now I've got the positioning, I'll get my mattock and uh, start digging. righty -o. so there's the spot. I'll move this to the side for now. And I've got the spot there, so I'll just dig out that starter hole. And I'm just digging the surface of the grass out first. I'm just digging the grass out by the roots. So I'll just get my starter hole and then I'm just going to work around and rip up the grass first. Pretty easy, grass roots are fairly shallow and it comes up fairly easy with one of these hoes. I just keep pulling that grass to the side because I'm actually going to be using that later, those clumps of grass. And then I'll work around work around that first center bit of the hole and what I'm aiming to do is get a, a hole probably about you know two and a half to three foot wide a meter wide or so and just search through for any more clumps because you don't want to dig clumps of grass back in then you'll have grass coming up through where the tree has been planted you got to get rid of most of it as much as you can anyway a good thick mulching will deter a lot of the grass from coming through though. There is some new way of thinking that you can plant your trees deeper and then they'll develop roots. We call it deep, deep planting. I'm not overly sold on that idea. I've had a lot of success with just planting with the old rule and that's plant no deeper than where it's originally the root ball is. Um, so you don't want to cover any more of that stem otherwise you might get stem rot or something like that. Now 
as I'm digging I'm thinking I want to make this hole at least twice or three times as wide as that root ball on, on the actual uh, the pot or the root ball of that of that young sapling and the reason for that is because you want that loose soil to be able to expand it if you take it straight out of that and put it into a similar sized hole that's got nice smooth walls around it it's like you're putting it from one pot into another pot and what what's going to happen is those roots will probably stay restrained and maybe even grow uh, cylindrically or not grow out and and be forced to bound itself and you don't want to you want your new tree to be able to get those roots out and expanding and getting all those nutrients from the soil you don't want it to think it's still in the pot and get root bound in the soil itself then it's just not going to grow very well Okay, in this case, this is some plastic wrapped around the root ball. So I just rip it. Try to be careful not to disturb the root ball too much. And at this point, I inspect, I inspect it, and make sure that it's not obscenely root bound. And you'll know if you see a whole bunch of roots that are twisted and sticking out, almost bulging, you know the plant's fairly old and it's been in the pot too long and needed to be potted up and it wasn't. But in this case, the roots um, are quite you know, fibrous. Uh, there's a lot of dirt. There's not a lot of roots sticking out, forcing out or bound around. And um, apart from maybe teasing out a little bit at the bottom, there's really not a lot that I really want to do. I don't want to disturb it too much because if you stir the root ball too much it could damage the tree. But I'll just tease that a little bit and then plop it in. And then at this point I want to make sure that I position the tree the way I want it. Yeah, good. And once you've got it positioned, then it's just a matter of backfilling in with the dirt. Like I said, in this case, I'm, to have, I'm not going to add anything extra to this. I very rarely do. I um, add some fertiliser, you know, either commercial fertiliser or my own fertiliser mix from my own chickens and animals and that. I'll add that in as the tree grows, you know, every six months or so. A um, little bit of fertiliser here and there. But generally, at the time of planting, I don't. I know some directions uh, say that you should add a bit of this and that, but uh, like I said, I'd rather not at the time of planting and just let the thing grow on with the nutrients it already has from the nursery and just give it about six months before I start adding too much to it. If the soil is terrible, um, well then yes I'll add some compost and improve the soil as I planned and that's no dramas but this this uh, top soil here is quite good so then that's all done it's nice and firm and uh, I'll just give it a light light press down with my foot and uh, make sure that the stem is right at soil level and uh, that looks perfect. Okay, great. Now at this point in time, some people like to place thick cardboard down or paper or uh, weed matting, those type of things. And that's fine if you want to sort of make sure the grass doesn't grow in and whack cardboard around. I, um, that's sort of not my style. Uh, I just, uh, I've done that a few times in the past and what I've found is a lot of cardboard blowing around the backyard in the big wind, especially at this time of year. So what I like to do is make use of the grass that I've just cut up, and I don't put it in to this area that I've that I've dug away. I put the grass on the outside border of where the grass ends, where the grass starts, and I tip it upside down so that the roots are in the air and the as much as possible type thing but this grass here is now going to die off and it's going to because it's green 
it's going to die off and it's going to actually kill the grass underneath the border here and it's going to give me even a wider a wider area around this tree and uh, you'd think that oh maybe this grass might start growing into the bed but it doesn't because it's been dug up it'll just die what I can do is put down some sugarcane mulch or some loosened mulch or anything you want really I've used leaves in the past I've used uh, old stuff from the kids playground um, old you know tan bark that was soft fall stuff that the kids don't use anymore um, I'd I've used uh, stuff from down the back old grass clippings whatever uh, at the moment I don't know if you saw my video on wood chipping I had a large Morton Bay fig a few branches fall down nearly hit my pecan if you remember that video I did a whole heap of wood chipping well I've got a bunch of that still lying underneath the tree there nice free mulch and it's going to keep the grass out it's going to keep the root ball here nice and moist and give this tree a really good start in life radio so I've got the mulch and now I just pour it on And now I'm going to cover the out, outer border where, the, where I put that grass and spread it all out and make sure that around the base of the tree here I leave about six inches free so that this wood chip or mulch isn't around the stem of the of the plant otherwise that can cause some rot as well and you don't want that because that'll cause the tree to scar up and you're not going to get as much nutrients to that young branches as you as you'd want and you want this tree to get a really good start because if a young fruit tree gets a really good start they turn into a really good oldest fruit tree that's for sure if they get a tough start it can take years to establish where a good start and a well looked after fruit tree from the beginning can be fruiting within a couple of years in fact this one's got flowers on it already may even produce one or two fruit which I'll probably take off so that it can put all its energy into growing rather than producing anything as much as I'd like fruit from it in the first six months it's probably not a good idea I'll give it a good drink Yeah, at this point you could give it a, a good watering can with some seaweed liquid fertilizer in it, nice light, just to um, help with the transplant shock. But I've found that I don't really need to do anything except plant the tree in and just let it establish itself. And that's my demonstration of how to plant a fruit tree done. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions, post them below. Don't forget the website selfsufficientme.com. Bye for now.